Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you're very welcome. I'm not going to make any announcements for this video. It may be a bit of a lengthy video, but I will do my best. The only thing that I will point out is to those who are dependent on subtitles. I'm very happy that YouTube is able to make the Master's Voice Prophecy videos available in many different languages, but it takes between 24 to 48 hours for the algorithm to make sense of my speech and then make the captions even available in English as well as in other languages. So to use or get subtitles, you're only going to find them on videos that have been up for at least three days. In the meantime, you can go to the cog icon that's on your phone. You can find it, I think, at the top or somewhere along the bottom row. There's a cog icon, and then when you click that, you will see the term auto-translate. And once you click auto-translate, it gives a whole host of languages that will be able to make this content available to you in your own language. This prophecy was received just a few days ago received yesterday actually it's a very tumultuous prophecy with a lot going on and the lord has been laying on my heart to not let this word stay a long time at all this prophecy contains many different elements but the title for this prophecy is actually the phrase the key phrase that was being repeated in these dreams so i had a lot of dreams that night it seemed as if the whole night was dreams and it was just one dream rolling into another dream or one dream and wake up briefly and then go back and into another dream and what separated every single montage that i will be speaking about here where the lord was speaking to me in the dream and also showing me things what separated each section of dreams was this phrase almost like a marker and the phrase was worse than 2008 part three so there have been prophecies on the master's voice before talking about the 2008 financial crash that America is going to have a very hard time of it. I think it will be very hard for people who have been consistent with this blog since the beginning, since 2019, to say that they're not seeing the things that I was saying at a time when we were not having much economic hardship in 2019, much economic problems, food didn't cost what it cost then, gas didn't cost, travel didn't cost, rent did not cost back then what it costs now and yet the lord was speaking forward to all these things and telling us that we would come to a time of economic hardship that would be so strange that we would start to have real problems putting food on the table real problems grappling with the cost of goods and the cost of services real problems being able to access basic services even if you have the money god was saying that america will come to a time where even if there is money there will not be the good or service that you would like to access. So money may not be the problem. The access to the thing will be the problem. God has spoken that America will be worse than Zimbabwe, that there will be a currency crash here, a major currency crash, and more has been spoken on this in this message. So what I'm making known here is that in between the different scenes of these dreams that I will experience this phrase came almost like an announcer's voice worse than 2008 part three and there are two previous prophecies talking specifically about 2008 so this is why this video is called part three but also there was one particular prophecy that i've covered and every time the dream sequence changed i saw the card for that video so i did see the card Unfortunately, I have not been able to locate. When I say the card, I'm basically talking about the cover photo. So every prophecy always has a cover photo, either on the blog and it's the same on video or sometimes very rarely they're different. He would always bring it spinning like in the movie. So it would come spinning and then it would be there and I would see that video. But even though um, the last 24 hours I've been making a diligent search, I have not yet located what video that was and i know he was bringing it back because he wanted me to do a recap of it but i trust the lord and should it be brought back to my remembrance i most certainly will do a brief prophecy to cover that and so let's go straight into the dream i spent the whole night dreaming about america going through different seasons of her decline that's basically what it was it was different seasons of america's decline 
It was seasons that if you are wise and you listen to this video with an open mind and an open heart and without any preconceived ideas or your personal filters, you, if you are a follower of the multiplicity of false prophets, false news outlets, false presidents, false pastors, and false everythings out there, if you are one who is simply minded to listen to the truth and marry it to what is happening in front of you right now and where your common sense can see things going, then you might be one that God might be able to rescue from deception. I was dreaming of where we're going, places that the false prophets are telling us we're not going. I was dreaming of the public aid and public assistance systems failing in America. So this is unemployment benefits. This is welfare benefits. This is WIC benefits. This is SNAP benefits. Um, SNAP is a food assistant program that we have here in New York City. I don't know if it's replicated, excuse me, please, in other states. But I was seeing what life will be like practically when those systems fail. And I can say that it was very, very hard for people because everything stopped working in America. And all these different dreams that I saw were showing me people who were so perplexed, people who were so frustrated, and people who were just suffering difficulties because there was absolutely no public response. This is no official response, no government response to their needs at all. So the first thing I saw, the first dream I saw was I saw people calling these various websites where if you don't, if you're not good with a computer here in America, you can simply call the website or call the helpline. And there are always people there who will help you to register for aid or assistance if you need it. But I saw people calling these websites, calling the helpline, calling for aid and nothing was happening. Nobody was answering, and that's because nobody was there. These offices were abandoned. They were empty. And what I saw were the site robots monitoring the sites. Site robot is basically something slightly smarter um, than the algorithm, which just does a bit of shifting. A site robot is actually an intelligent robot, AI, after 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 a form. It's a type of AI that has been formed to interact with us as consumers, as customers, as people, the site robots pick up the calls and they say, hi, welcome to this and that place. I'm so glad to be able to assist you. Is this number you're calling on the number that you want us to keep? Is this number associated with your account? A site robot can do a lot. And the reason I'm explaining it is because in some countries they don't have site robots yet. They still deal with people fully and you are a very blessed nation. If you have that site robots, take your basic information and site robots then will try to process a problem for you by giving you a series of prompts. They will tell you if you want to do this, press one, if you want to do this, press two, and they can guide you through a process. But if you hit a problem, the site robot then moves you on to a human being because a human being is more skilled at being able to deal with different problems. But what I saw is that when the, when the offices of places that give aid and assistance to Americans, when, I, when these offices were, were empty, the site robots continued to do the job alone. So they were monitoring all the sites, they were taking the calls, they were logging the calls, they were listening to people, hi, how can I help you today? But then I heard, instead of people saying, oh, hi, I'm, I'm Jessica and I need this, I began to hear crying and hysterical voices come on describing situations that are not commonplace in America right now. So this is a future time I'm speaking of when the country has declined to the point that it's okay to leave the welfare office or the unemployment office or the hospital completely unmanned. And once the crying hysterical voice would come on, my child is sick. My child is so sick and we tried everything. My child is dying. Some of the voices said, other voices said, we have no, no food and I need a human. I need to talk to a person. There was no rollover to a human agent because there were no people there to help. So these are the calls that were coming in. And this is what I heard in this dream. A tree fell in the yard. We had a storm. It fell in the yard and it trapped my husband. We're trying to get him out, but we can't. It's crushing him. Please send someone. And this would be either a fire department call or a 911 call. The next voice says, my child fell into a well. His leg is broken. 
We tried everything, but we can't get down there because it's too narrow and he doesn't know what to do to help us get him out. Please send someone. But there was no answer. Please. My daughter's accidentally drowned. We're trying everything, but she's not responding. Please send someone. But there was no response. Occasionally, however, the voice that I heard in the dream was very flat and hollow unaffected, meaning that it had no tone. And that was because in some of the cases of the calls that were coming in, there was no need to send anyone quickly because the damage had already been done. And the example that I heard in my dream was this, my baby died, my baby is dead. Nobody's here, we got flooded. The water is by my chest. The door jammed and I couldn't get into his room and he can't swim. My baby is dead. I need a person, please. Can somebody tell me what to do? And so I saw these sight robots in the dream with their heads. The Lord had them like these heads that moved when a call came in and moved when a call came in. I saw the sight robots monitoring all the emergency calls that came in and there was no personnel there and I could not tell what time period this was, if it was what time period of the economic decline it was, where the government could no longer maintain adequate rescue services and rescue, rescue personnel, or whether it was a further point where the government gave up all pretense that things were working and America was just allowed to break down. So there will come a time of economic decline where the government is strongly going to rely on propaganda to keep us fooled. They're going to keep telling us that Everything is fine. Everything is working perfectly. And these are just minor hiccups. And we should rally behind the nation because the nation has been through tougher times before America. And we've always come back from this. Or whether it's the future time where, as I saw, the malls are going to be completely broken down. Creatures are going to be moving around in this country. It's going to be one lawless anarchist purge state where people just do anything to anyone. Law of the jungle, law of repercussions, all the laws that the Lord just mentioned in yesterday's prophecy. And the government is going to be there after a form and people are completely going to ignore them. I've seen dreams where they are making announcements and they're speaking things on the news and people are basically breaking into stores to see is there anything in the store that we can eat and breaking into cars to see is there anything of value that we can take and maybe pawn it or trade it. No one will pay attention to the government at a certain point. So there are different, there are different phases to the evolution of what America is going to go through and this is just what I see in the dreams. So um, then after this first part, it came again, it came in my spirit worse than 2008, part three. And the Lord said, America will be worse than the 2008 global financial crisis. Now we know this was a crippling crisis that almost took all the world leaders, so-called developed nations down. They went down to their knees and they nearly took everybody else with them. And so God says that America will be worse than what the world saw in 2008's global financial crisis. So then after that, the first time this phrase, worse than 2008, part three, came up in my spirit, worse than 2008, part three. And the Lord said, America will be worse than the 2008 global.
that you, you being yourself, the government is judging you, but then you have to please all these other people and they get to have an opinion on who you are. And I said, this must lead to a very fake human being who is trying their hardest to appear something likable. And my score would probably be negative 1 billion at that rate. So it was later that I found that it is called the credit score and not the credit society score. And this mirrors something that China already had um, when I was speaking about it, where they, they try to control social behavior by saying that everyone should really be helpful in the society and everyone should pick up trash and everybody should be green and everybody should drink cold tea because hot tea uses energy that burns cold, that makes the world um, filled with global warming and things like that. And you get points if you do well and you get docked points if you don't do well. And so in a world where access to services is being determined by so many moving layers of other people's opinions and other people's perceptions, you can simply see the kind of stress and mental breakdown that is going to be embedded into this new world order. And it is not by mistake. This system is not being brought in because they think it's the most efficient. This system is being brought in because it's the most crushing for the average human being. Because as you can hear with all these multiple layers, it has the potential to cause people to become unstable, unhappy, depressed. And when people are in that state, they are very easily manipulated and controlled and told, this is for the greater good. I said that in the future, we will hear this phrase for the greater good many, many times. It will be, we will hear of our well-being and social equity and the greater good. These are the terms that we are going to be living with. And so you will need credits, meaning you will actually need to have money, meaning that a person who has no credits can't fly. You're already you're already off the list of people who can access the train and the bus and other things like that. If you don't have credits, meaning that you have somehow done something, you are, um, you are against the government or you've been marked as a person who needs monitoring and something like that. And they've just wiped out your entire bank account. Then you have no credits, So you can't even access services. So you need credits first, but then you also need a healthy credit score. And the example that I've been bringing here since 2021 is that the Lord showed me a man and his wife, just got married and they wanted to go on honeymoon and they wanted to f fly first class. And the man had enough credits to pay for it, but because their joint credit score was low or his credit score was low, as much as he tried to purchase, he was not given access to the nice honeymoon flights, the first class fi flights. He was not able to access those things because the credit score did not give him access to nice things. And so that is it. And then the next phase, worse than 2008, part three, the next phase of this prophecy is called famine in America. And these are the Lord's words. Please listen. Go and tell them from me. They will have no food to eat. I will break the staff of bread in America, just as I did in Egypt, until there was no agriculture and no yields so will I do to America. A terrible famine will arise in the USA that they will not be able to overturn. All their efforts will not work. All agricultural experiments will fail. All cloud seeding methods will fail. And irrigation technologies and, and pumping water from underground to water their crops, it will all fail. Tell them, I will blight them. I will blight America. Now, blight, when I looked it up, it's a kind of plant disease, so I'm sure that farmers are familiar with it. It's some kind of fungi, um, such as mildew or rust, that comes on plants, and once it gets there, it's just horrible and moldy, and it spreads very quick throughout the crop. And it's an infestation because it attacks the plants at the root meaning that while the plant is still in the ground, blight will attack that seed so that the seeds you plant will never even bring out anything. And then it also attacks when the plants are very young, it attacks the tissues of the plant so that even if something manages to sprout, it dies very quickly. A blight is also an eyesore. A blight is a thing that spoils the horizon. So you're looking at a very nice landscape, you're looking at all the nice property, and then suddenly there's a house there that burned down and it hasn't been pulled down and it's just ruining the very nice neighborhood street. So it's anything that spoils or damages something in a tangible way or an intangible way. 
To blight also means to have a very bad and detrimental effect on something. So God is basically saying that America is going to become covered over as if by mold. And when all the other nations get together and they're all fancy developed nations and they're world leaders, then there's going to be America looking like she has a case of mumps, measles, and a rash all over. She's not going to be as attractive among the other leaders because God says he's going to blight her. And he also says that this is a biblical punishment that we all know from the Old Testament when agriculture fails and you have um, you have low low yields and your agricultural methods are not working and God is letting the nation know that just what he did to Egypt as a punishment to Egypt, that he struck her with that famine and the only mercy that he showed her was that Joseph was in the midst and Joseph was a man who knew the times and he knew what to do. God says that this is what he, was, he is doing, and America is going to have a very bad famine. And I've spoken that many people don't know what hunger in this country. Many people is in this country. Many do, but many don't. And God says that all the fancy technology, this is flying the things and seeding the clouds to make it rain, and all the irrigation and pumping things up from the ground to water the crops, it won't work because the famine is going to be from him. He said, I will strike the bread of the land and people will wail for bread. This is the second time that I'm bringing this prophecy in less than 30 days where I have said that Americans will wail for their daily bread and the leaders, God says, will stand by making excuses and failing to find solutions. This is the very word that I brought here recently. And there is a prophecy that speaks of this. It is called the stock and the store. And there were two prophecies given like that back to back in the middle of 2021. And the Lord has instructed me to read one of them and also Isaiah 3. And I will do that near the end of the prophecy. Worse than 2008, part three, the Lord said, this is a nation of no more grace. America will have no grace. This is a nation of national bankruptcy. No money, no laws just smoke and mirrors and endless lies that are going to cost the average person everything. The lies have come full circle. The breakdown is here. And now after all these years of proclaiming the word of the Lord, it is finally visible. Americans can see it now. The rot is visible at last. They finally noticed. They feel it happening. And finally, the Lord says, I am about to get your attention. So I received this part during a brief period where I woke up from sleep and I was just thinking on the things that I've seen, I'd seen so far, you know, people calling in and some of them frantic because there's still hope to help a loved one, save a loved one. And then some of them, their voice is just so dead because the damage has been done. And God is now saying that America's full punishment, her full her full experience of everything that she's going to go through, bankruptcy and the, corrupt, the, the collapse of banking and having no money and having no laws, just a lawless nation and being deceived continuously by a government that uses smoke and mirrors until the government doesn't need the smoke and mirrors, at which time it will use tanks and guns against the people. And he says all these endless lies are going to cost the average person everything, but now the lies have come full circle and Americans can see this. And I was thinking, on this because um now you can see on social media many many people are making a certain type of video and that certain type of video is simply saying what's going on fellow americans is anyone else going through this is it just me i can't pay my bills and i, I don't know if i can keep my ch my child in daycare it costs the earth and people are starting to feel this is not even a crisis. People are starting to feel just the first wisps, the first tendrils of something that is going to spiral far beyond anyone's ability to navigate. If, if you believe that you are going to navigate the future of this country because you served in the military, so you know about guns and you know about tactical weapons and you know where all the hills are and you know how to fight bears, so you're fine. Or if you believe that you know what's best because you're a farmer and you know how to live off the land or you believe you know what's best because you're a pundit or you know what's best because you're whatever, God is going to humble every type of person in this country, except the person who's already on their knees and saying, um, thy will be done. 
thy kingdom come. That's the only person that won't be brought to their knees. And that's because that person is on their knees already. Everybody else with a choke level, with a false belief that they know this or they know that is going to join that fifth type of person who's already on their knees, humbled and abased before God and saying, but like Ezekiel, when the Lord says, can this dead economy rise? Can the failed, can I still feed you with the failed money? Then you're like Ezekiel on your knees and you're saying, oh Lord God, only you know, which is one of the best and wisest answers in recorded answer history. God says that the rot, these prophecies, in other words, are finally being noticed, that people can feel it happening. And he says, I am about to get your attention, which means you haven't seen anything yet. No more grace, no mercy whatsoever, nothing done according to any plan or blueprint, no outcome that you want. Only the structure will be left to fall into disarray and disappear, disrepair until from the government services to the government functioning, there will be no way to recognize the operations of the USA as a sound thing. So these messages have been consistent since the very first one that I made. And yet people will say that it is fear mongering and hate. How confusing to be so arrogant in your spirit that when God is detailing to you, as he detailed to Babylon and as he detailed to the Greeks, when he said, oh, the king of the north and the king of the south are going to come and they'll tussle. And then afterwards, the kingdom will fall to four and then they will fall to this. So God was able to tell greater empires than this one, how they would fall. He raised up prophets to tell them why they would fall. And then they fell according to plan. And nobody said this is hate and this is hatred and hatering. But then here, the arrogance of heart is such that as the Lord is speaking, then people are saying, oh no, she hates America. And it's the hate that's talking. All I will say is this must be mighty specific hate, detailed with a date on each single one. So throughout the night, I was troubled by dreams of people crying for food, people crying for help, people crying for rescue services, the ambulance and 911 and, and the local police and the Amber Alert. And Amber Alert is when your child goes missing because a trafficker has managed to get to your child before you or your child wanders off and a trafficker gets to that child before you. An Amber Alert is what we send out when babies go missing or even when teens go missing. Saw people crying for the fire department and, and crying for the help of child services because of abuse going on in the home and nobody came to do anything to make it right. And food services like the SNAP benefits and WIC, which is women, infants, and children where special food and special finances are given to single mother households to help them and people needing social workers and whoever's supposed to come if you're being attacked or robbed, whoever's supposed to come if you're sick, Whoever's supposed to come if a man is beating you up in domestic violence? Whoever's supposed to come and help you if someone attacks you in your own home? Whoever's supposed to come and protect you or solve the case if there's a murder? Or if you need those silver heating blankets that the government provides when a hurricane suddenly takes away people's homes? I saw people in each of these situations in many distressing rolling dreams and there was no one coming to give help People were crying for rescue services after the tsunamis and the hurricanes that will hit America. It was called baseline storms in the dream. That's what they were being called. Baseline storms, category five, category five, baseline category five or higher incoming on the Florida mainland. This is an urgent advisory. This is the announcement that I heard being made in the dream. America was suffering the kind of natural disasters that do not happen here. The kind of monsoons that carry 7,000 people away in one afternoon in India. The kind of thing that hit Thailand many years ago on December the 25th. That kind of storm that Indonesia gets and then the tsunami just comes and wipes away one entire edge of the island and people were living there and then suddenly there are no people, no animals, no infrastructure, nothing. That kind of natural disaster began to happen here as the Lord removed his hand of favor and protection from on America. I also saw what no mercy means. God showed me that America is not going to have this storybook ending of, that was a close one. 
that, that storm was going to hit us, but then suddenly it turned and it went off into the Gulf of Mexico. We, we were right in its path, but then suddenly it turned and, and it went to Haiti and it ruined their nation instead. No, no, no. In fact, this time I saw the storms turn with a very deliberate focus and they stayed on American soil until even the grass that we know is firmly planted began to root up in front of me and fly away like an unseen land lawnmower was going at it. I saw the ground rippling, rooted up. And when the disasters hit, this one was called a twister that began to make landfall and it began to rip up the ground in America as it was ripping its way throughout the area where it landed. And this is just information that came into my spirit as I was transcribing the prophecy later. Twisters have the same power as a landmine. Now, I, I don't study these things, so this is just what was given to me, and I believe the Lord. He said that a twister, which I think is a tornado, has the same power as a landmine exploding. He said they carry the same force or greater like an explosive. And when they hit, they can strike anything and they can break it up to pieces and carry those shattered bits off, never to be found again, or they will be found many miles from where they started. The power of a twister to shatter things and carry the pieces, or to even carry things completely whole and put them down miles away from where it took them from, includes living things, he said. Twisters can carry cattle, people, pets, anything that is alive and not adequately sheltered, tied down, or protected. And so I wrote here that anytime I woke from a dream or anytime I moved into another dream, I kept seeing the cover for one of my old prophecies. And I heard the saying, worse than 2008. It will be worse than 2008. And so I, I saw people calling the different hotlines, but nobody came. America had chaos. Nobody was there and America had nobody to fill in the gaps. This is what people kept hearing. All our agents are busy now. Please call back later or just keep holding. The Lord said, you will hear this sentence until it drives you to madness. Thus says the Lord, if somebody dies and you're snowed in, he said, you will sit with that dead person in your neighborhood until you're finally forced to dig in the frozen ground yourself and bury that person. They will not come for them. They will not pick up your call. They will not send the emergency services or the paramedics, nor will they send the funeral services to come and pick them up. And no one will come to take them to keep them at the hospital in refrigeration. You will bury them. You will dig that grave and you will live knowing that your family member is buried on the property. And he said, the pain that it causes you is part of the pain of the judgments of a sinful nation. You will bury them. You will cover them. You will wait and wait for somebody to come and nobody will come. And so you will have to make a plan yourself. Worse than 2008. It will be worse than 2008. America will be a sinful, lawless, and broken place with no right to help and no ability to depend on anyone. Social security will fail to function. Financial crisis will shut down that process. And the Lord said that old people will fall through the cracks. The system is over. The system is failing right in front of you, right now, as they gaslight you about new measures and emergency programs that they say they're putting up. But these new measures and emergency programs have no power to stop the leeching and the hemorrhaging of essential services and cannot do anything to make them more effective. So you might be wondering, what is leeching? What is hemorrhaging of the essential services? Well, um, how many people have started to experience that a doctor you were going to has suddenly withdrawn from your particular insurance? Doctors are leaving national practice. Doctors are retiring altogether or they're going into smaller enclaves to work among themselves or they're simply declining to participate with insurance. Now, in a nation that already has such gappy insurance and healthcare problems, 
What does it mean for the average person in the average person's pockets when the doctor says, I'm no longer participating with any insurance. I'm still a doctor, but I only accept cash. It means that the cash people automatically catapult to the top. And then the people who don't have cash are left with a smaller pool of available medical services that they can draw from and that insurance is ready to pay for them, pay for it. And you already notice insurance is starting to say more and more, we're not going to cover this and we're not going to cover that. And we're only going to pay for about 3% of this. And you're going to pay all the rest as your deductible. So all of that is happening. And God says that it is the deliberate destruction of a sinful, lawless, and broken place that is eventually going to lose the right to get help from anyone or depend on anyone. Besides natural disasters, America will have diseases. No sanitation services will exist in the cities. The rats will rule you. And I brought this prophecy in 2021 where I said that I saw rats in the cities of America that were so big that the rat could compete with a cat and not a baby cat either. They were so big that they were moving in a blanket across the street and not a single person was daring enough to try and cross the street at the same time that groups, group of rats were crossing the streets. And I said, among the river of rats crossing the street, I saw some big boys whose backs were above the rest of the rats, like little puppies in their midst. And God says that there's going to be the kind of outbreak of pests in this country that people will not believe. The rodent and the pest problems will get way out of control and nobody who calls pest control or building inspectors is going to actually see them coming to do anything. You will live in squalor, the same conditions as the middle ages, except that you will have electricity sometimes and Wi-Fi. This is not me speaking. This is the Lord speaking. The word squalor speaks to the times of the middle ages where there was no running water in the house and people had to basically boil water in the kettle and put it in a big tub. And then unhygienically, sometimes the entire family would use that water because it was so inconvenient to get water and the way they did it, which is why they had such high infant mortality is that the father would shower and then the mother and then the next child. And then they would bathe the baby last because they didn't know much about hygiene and things at that time. And so there was high infant mortality because the babies were going into water that is just beyond the pale. So the Lord says that middle ages conditions will apply. And I've already brought the prophecy. I think it was early 2002. It was talking about Zika fever and it was talking about the return of many diseases that will be coming back. And, um, one of those diseases that God says we will see many ancient diseases come back. And one of them is bubonic plague. And I've already been informed recently that there's been an outbreak now of leprosy in the United States. And you have to wonder where that came from. So rats cause bubonic plague and they cause a host of other horrible sicknesses. And when they get out of control, you can understand why the Lord uses the word squalor. He says you will have a conundrum. A conundrum is a very tough problem that hurts your head when you think about solving it. He said you have a modern home, you have a modern life, you have modern conveniences. So we've got laptops and we've got um, electric city bikes and we've got all that stuff. And then he says, you're going to have a middle ages society. You will lack cleaning services. You will lack sanitation and trash, trash services. No sanitation, no trash. This means no garbage collection, no pest control, no city inspectors, no restaurant control to control how the restaurants put trash outside. There will be no waste disposal services. Nobody's coming to pick up trash. Nobody's going to be burning it at the dump. And there will be no city compliance ordinances, meaning that the bed bugs can eat you alive and the landlords will not be forced to do anything by anyone. No medical services. Nobody will answer the hospital helpline. Nobody will answer 911. The lines will go dead or they will just keep ringing and being answered by the sight robots until you finally get it, that nobody's coming. The Lord said that America will be like a slum in some places once these essential services break down. He said, you will see what life is like when nobody comes to the door with that badge and that official voice that says, hello, I'm here. We got the call. We're here to do this and that for you. 
we're here to help. Worse than 2008. It will be worse than 2008. America will have no more grace. God will no longer excuse the sins of America or forgive them or overturn them as he has in the past. Now, America must pay for everything that she has earned to herself. War, famine, civil war, the breakdown of society, natural disasters of category five and above. So I don't know if things go above category five in the listing that exists for natural disasters, but things are going to come that are six, nine, and 10, even when the scale does not go that high. He says it will be breakdown of the fabric of society and the fall of the empire. The highest recorded rainfall, the highest recorded summers, boiling temperatures and heat waves that cause visible fever blisters and burning of the skin. And this was not, this was not easy to see. This was not an easy thing to see. So, uh, impossible rain falling. And I've already spoken of that in the flooding prophecy that I, that I brought, I think it was in April, impossible rainfall being marked in the United States, Amazon jungle, hundred inches in one afternoon type of thing. Rain is going to start happening here. But then on the heat side, God is saying that the summers are going to be boiling. And these things are written down in the prophecies from 2019 that I said, I saw a news, uh, announcer and he was standing and the entire map was orange and red. So there wasn't a green thing to be seen. And he was saying, uh, it's a scorcher out there. It's really, really, really hot out there. So be careful. And the reason that he was saying things like that is because God says that the temperatures are going to go to boiling. It's going to be unnaturally hot and the heat waves are going to cause people to have visible fever blisters and their skin is going to be burned. And I saw that people actually will have something like raised legions that, that brought me in mind of what it says in the book of revelation, that to the sinful people who would not stop sinning, their skin was actually being burned up by impossible heat. And it says those people cursed God even more. So that is just something to consider. Um, he said it will be dangerous to go outside in some of the heat waves that America will have. It will be essential to sit in water so that you can keep your internal organs at a decent temperature from time to time. And so this is basically dipping. This is basically filling the bathtub with water and having a dip now and then or going to the pool or something like that. And he says, you will sometimes have to immerse in water to stay alive. So this is obviously talking about the kind of heat that is not usually discussed on any weather channel in any time of this nation's history. Record breaking disasters that are on the news in other countries will show the extent of damage, devastation, land mass movement, and loss of life that will occur in the United States. I just referred to this where God says that America has been very favored by him and very protected. And so this country doesn't usually record the kind of disasters that says there was a landslide and 6,000 people um, f were suddenly covered a hillside next to an apartment, a set of apartment condominiums, maybe five, the hillside next to them just suddenly came down and 6,000 people or 600 people who were living in that thing were suddenly covered in one night with no hope of getting them because the mud is 600 meters deep or something like that. He says that the kind of disasters that we always see on the news will begin to happen here and other people will be watching the extent of the devastation and the way the landmass will shift and move and the type of loss of life that will occur here. Coastal towns. Just a moment, please. To the coastal towns, you will report tsunamis. You will generate tsunami reports and be forced to record how many were not found after several days of searching. The search and the rescue teams will be overburdened, man down, man down. Men will lose their lives in these rescue efforts because they will become increasingly dangerous. And that is understandable when you're going through natural disasters that are not as manageable by FEMA and the other rescue services as previously 
then that means you are facing situations that are outside the scale of your men. It's outside the number of men you have. It's outside the, the, the expectations that you've ever dealt with. It's outside of the machinery and the hardware that you use to save people. And so God says that even the search and rescue people who are doing the rescuing will lose their lives because the rescue efforts will be so dangerous. He said there will be many breakdowns on the health teams many break down on the rescue teams. Their mental health will be affected by what they see and by what they're having to put up with. It says the men will be tired. They will suffer from heat exhaustion as they work in scorching conditions to recover lost bodies that must be accounted for. And I hope that it will be remembered that there was a prophecy here from, I think it was late 2022. It's called the, the many words of the Lord um, natural disasters, the trans army and the economy. And in that was the first time that the Lord said that America will know the extent of his judgment because the TV likes to sanitize everything for us. So there's something horrible. People are shot and then they go and they blur out all the bodies that will be on the train platform and they blur out all the blood and they blur out everything. And they bring this sanitized version of lies to the TV. And then they still have the nerve to say, these images may be disturbing when actually you're just looking at a fully redacted screen that shows nothing. The Lord says that this is now the era of the cell phone. And as these natural disasters are taking place, people are going to stand right there and record bodies floating by and then put the images all over social media. And America will be able to see the truth and the reality and the full extent of the judgment that God is bringing. He said the news agencies will be prevented from redacting and lying to people about how bad it is because people will just film it. They will film the things that happen and, and put the death toll up on social media. And he said that the social media places, no matter how fast they work to take it down, those videos will still keep going up and they will be downloaded to millions of phones and people will have the raw data about what is happening in the country and they won't be able to deny that certain things are happening. FEMA is inadequate says the Lord, you cannot try me, the Lord, and win. I will batter your towns and coastal cities with storms never seen before. You will say that it is a man-made weather storm, and this is something America loves to do, to say that everything is harp and blue beam and green beam, but the Lord says that you do this because you have not seen my glory you do not read your Bible and you do not know the wrath of the Lord when you see it without claiming that the glory belongs to man. It is me. You will see my hand on America creating dust bowls and famine emergency areas with the same hand that I use to create flooded cities and homeless people. I will judge you to the edge of your nation and then I will cross you over to serve hard sentences in a land you do not know. So God is saying that no matter how shiny and on top of the situation FEMA looks and all the awareness preparedness, even if all the states go into a whole year of awareness preparedness right from the moment that I give this prophecy, which is August the 3rd, even though the prophecy is dated August the 2nd, it was dreams I had yesterday. God says that FEMA is absolutely inadequate for what is coming and that America has tried him, but she cannot try the Lord. This basically means you cannot tempt God and win. And Jesus warned us about this all the way in Matthew 4, where he says that thou shall not tempt the Lord your God. God says that you cannot try him, America, and win. He's going to batter the towns, battle the coasters, coastal cities with storms of categories we've never seen before. And then people are going to say, it's a harp storm. It's a project blue beam store, storm. But God says that just, you don't read your Bible. And so you don't actually know what Old Testament people saw. Old Testament people saw the seas being opened. Old Testament people saw the, the boiling hot sulfur balls that came from the sky and that cooked Sodom and Gomorrah and all the other towns and, and cooked the whole place until it's just one sticky black mass to this day. Old Testament people saw Mrs. Lot, a human being, turned into a pillar of salt and she's still standing somewhere out there in, in the Middle East to this day. Old Testament people saw a lot of stuff and so they would never 
attribute God's movements and God's judgments and God's punishments and say, oh, it's the weather control mechanism and it's the elites and everything. And God says that he's going to bring a helpful distinguishing between what man can do with man's toys that man received from Satan and the fallen angels, which can cause tsunamis and can cause earthquakes and can cause storms and can seed the clouds and create a tornado. But he's going to go next level so that even the elites will be telling people, please, please, it's not us. This is the finger of the Lord. Isn't that what the magician said when Pharaoh kept trying to test God in Egypt? Pharaoh kept trying to go for gold until his advisors had to say, uh, sir, it was fun in the beginning, but can you not see how Israel, how Egypt is destroyed? Because Pharaoh kept saying, well, you know, he did this one, let's match him and let's match him. And then the magicians bowed out. They said, no, there came a time where a miracle was done and they could not replicate the miracle. And they conceded defeat before the Lord and said, this is the finger of the Lord. This part of the prophecy that I'm giving the United States of America is the finger of the Lord. And when that finger is raised, there is no soul on this earth that can turn it back until the judgment is fulfilled. And so this is why I spoke of the righteous people become very familiar with that kneeling, humble posture because God is so kind to humble people. God is so kind to people who have gotten bored of saying it's lies and it's hate and I'm still testing her spirit. And he's waiting to see those people on their knees in the prayer closet because there are deeper conversations to be had with your God. And so I will go into the last prophecy for today and that is part of God saying that he will break the staff of bread in America, um, that prophecy is called the stock and the store. Just a moment, please. I will be reading from the book of Isaiah chapter three, but I'm going to paraphrase. So you can read along in your King James, your new King James, your NIV, whatever it is that you can follow. Please make sure that your Bible does not befuddle you. Make sure that your Bible is easily understood understood by you. Don't try to read a Bible above your level of understanding simply because all the experts on the internet who have been studying the Bible for 40 years have no understanding that if you come to the Bible now, you might jump into a KJV and get confused. Don't get a Bible which you know you need to study so that you can have a personal grasp of what God is saying and who God is in the first place, only to have the Bible hem you in, trap you, and then you're struggling with the thing. Um, babies eat baby food, teens eat teen food. And yes, the 40 year old people do eat um, the 16, 11 or whatever they favor. And so here we go, paraphrased. God is talking about the fact that he is going to break the strength of a proud nation. This would be his own beloved Judah at the time he was judging them. Um, David's own territory that God had given him to him and his sons as an inheritance wherever. And he's describing how he's going to do it and the kind of poverty that will come and why. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts will take away from Jerusalem and from Judah, the stock and the store. This means all your supplies. This means all the guns and the bullets and the food and everything else that you can stock up and store says he will take it away. The whole supply of bread and the whole supply of water, the mighty man and the man of war. This means that the soldiers will be taken away. That's who the mighty man and the man of war are. The soldiers, the protectors, the pilots, the Navy SEALs. God says that these people are all being taken away. And I brought many prophecies about what will happen to the military folk of this nation, especially those who have not repented and think that Russia and China can't do anything to them. I will take away the judge and the prophet, the diviner and the elder. This is the religious covering of a land. So the first thing that happens to them is that they get corrupted. God allows them because they love lies and their audience likes being lied to. God allows Satan to put lies in the mouths of these people. And you lose judges who are wise and just. They become people who want bribes. You lose prophets who actually have the ear of the Lord. They literally prophesy according to what people put in the comment section that they want to hear next. 
you lose the diviner and the elder. Now the diviner is confusing. If you don't know that even in the land where there were true prophets, there are people who can bring a true prophetic prophetic word working by demonic spirits. God says that even the demonic spirit people are going to fall silent. Even the demonic spirit people are not going to have a word. So nobody in the religious enclave and none of the leaders and the teachers are going to have a word. The captain of 50 and the honorable man, again, these are your military people. The captain of 50 in the military protectors, men who have risen to such a level, who have distinguished themselves to such a level that they can command 50 men in the army. God says that he will take them away. And he will also take away every single person who is honorable. And I've already spoken of the fact that God says that many good people will leave this earth. He said he's not leaving his servants here to suffer and see the things that are going to come. He's going to give them rest. And they won't have to see, for instance, Nephilim and fallen angels dating someone in their lineage. And things like that. He said he will take away the counselor and the skillful artisan and the expert enchanter. The counselor is one who has wisdom, somebody who can teach you and make things clear to you. The skillful artisan, these are all the people who produce goods in an economy and the expert enchanter. For this purpose, we can simply say Hollywood. If anybody's weaving spells in this nation, it's them. And I will give them children to be their princes and babies to rule over them. So I spoke of this gave this prophecy in 2021, I explained that when God says a child will be your prince and a babe will rule over you, you're going to get a, a type of government where some of the people are babies and we know that babies can't do anything. So it's going to be those people that we see on America now that they have made their living blaming other people. So their entire campaign for anything that they want to be elected for is based on blaming other people and saying, if it were me, I would do this. So-and-so has been in the Senate for 20 years and he's got a record of doing nothing. So it's babies that pass blame. It's babies that are non-performer and it's children that will be the princes. I spoke of children and I said that while they're very lovely, we all know that their emotional range is a bit stunted and that's because they're new to the planet and they don't know much. So when a child is your prince, you will find people in government who don't know anything about government. They don't know how government works. They don't know what's supposed to be done there. They don't know how the responsibilities are supposed to fall. They don't know that if the leader is at the front and he's not commanding his troops properly and things go wrong, they can't say, well, I didn't know anything about it. Rah, rah. You can't do that. A child in office will blame this person and blame that person and, and cause dissension and this is what happens when you don't have seasoned men and women at the helm. The people will be oppressed. Everyone oppressed by the other. Everyone oppressed by his neighbor. The child will be rude towards his elder and the base towards the honorable. And this is the state of America already. The child disrespecting the elder is already visible. But then the base towards the honorable so basically, it's the stoners at home, living in their mother's basements, unable to hold jobs and have normal human relationships on weed, who will then do three-hour live streams and talk about the people who are actually doing something in the world. The base, those who have not accomplished, those at the very lowest levels of society, have an opinion about people who are actually out there and making things happen. And this is the sign of twisted thinking and perversion in a society where nothing is worthy of honor anymore. And all of it is open for mockery because everybody now has an access keyboard right in their hand. The Lord says a time when a man will take hold of his own brother in his father's house. And he will say, you have clothing so you can be our ruler and let all these ruins come under your power. But in that day, the brother will protest and say, no, I can't, I can't fix your problems because I don't have food or clothing in my house. So please do not make me a ruler of the people. And what God is saying here is that the kind of poverty that he is describing is poverty that will be so bad that if you see someone actually has a shirt and pants and shoes and socks and a belt, that person will look so well put together that other people will say, I think that you should be the mayor of our town because you have a full outfit. They will look 
at the very barest minimum that a human being should have. And if anyone among them has that minimum, they will say, please, we want you to be the elected councilman and the mayor and the governor of the town. And you can be the sheriff as well. Just come and rule us and let everything that we have come under your protectorship. But at the same time, God is saying that nobody will want that type of responsibility. And that person is going to say, no, I, I don't really have anything at all. When you think about it, these things don't really mean much and I cannot be in charge of you. Jerusalem has stumbled and Judah has fallen because their tongue and because their deeds are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. Just a moment, please. So it's very clear. The Lord says that a nation fell, a nation stumbled, and then the nation fell down and it was their mouth. That's the first thing. He didn't say because they're evil acts again. No, he said their tongue. He said their mouth is the reason that they fell down. And then also their acts were against the Lord and their acts provoked God. That's why he judged them. And he said the look of their face witnesses against them and declares their sin like Sodom. They don't even hide it. Woe to their souls, for they have brought evil upon themselves. And you can look at the various social media accounts. People are opting more and more to go with the least amount of clothing necessary. And this is what it says, the look of the countenance witnesses against them. When you live in a nation where children whose ages still end with teen want to date men whose ages end with T, 30, 40, 50, 20, then there's a problem. He says the look of this nation basically is a witness against the nation. And that look is the brazen look of a harlot, male harlot, female harlot, habits, things people watch, things people listen to. You listen to the music today. It's, it's a wonder if your soul will stay intact at the end of those lyrics. And then people will say they're Christians and they will sit and play that in their car. They will sit under the spirit of that music and then they will still want to say, Jesus loves me. This I know. This is the height of confusion. And God says that the sin of this nation is declared against them like Sodom. And we all know what Sodom was guilty for. Man to man love. Man to man love and the desire to sleep with creatures. The fallen ones. And he says they don't hide it. To be present means that you don't mind who can see that you're Miss Candy from Atlanta, who is the queen of the pole at the strip club. You don't care. You're proud of your job as a prostitute because now the term has been called to change. The term has been changed to sex work to give it honor. America is the nation that gives honor where it is impossible to give honor honor that decides to give pronouns to things that were named before any of us were born. A he and a she were established in human history until this country has arisen at the end of time. The primary nation of iron mixing with clay to produce an insanity that cannot hold together. What has never been done before America now does and so God says, the mouth and the acts have brought upon the fall of this nation. But there is one last contingent here that must have their say. Say to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they will eat the fruit of their doings. As the righteous, temperate, peaceful, loving God, loving the scripture, helpful to your neighbor where you are able to. God says that you will eat the fruit of what you have done. And on this prophecy, though, there have, on this channel, though, there have been very few words that God has given me um, for his children. And that is because he expects you to know where to find him. Christians, God expects you to know where to find him. So if you're a real Christian, really, you should not be asking me, where's the hope? The hope is right here. Mine is quite old, but it's right here. The hope hasn't changed his position. He, he's been the blessed hope and he shall continue to be the blessed hope, whether we are with him now or with him later. 
He said that it will be well to the righteous. And there are a few prophecies here. Um, the Lord was saying to me before I make this, made this video, just a moment, please. One of the things he was saying to me as I was putting my materials together is tell them that if they want to get married, they will get married. That is what he said. He said, if you have a heart that desires to get married, you will get married. But he did say that you cannot sit there and expect it to fall like a ripe fruit off a branch because all things in the current era that we are living for shall be received with persecution. That is the rule to all who love him. You give up this, you give up mother, father, you give up lands, you give up property. You will receive much more than that in this life, he said, but with persecution. Satan is not going to stop being Satan just because you have a need, just because you have a desire. People who go through life saying, oh, it's going to happen for me at the right time. You are confused. You may be a child of God, but you are confused. All things are coming with, war with warfare at this time. The kingdom is suffering violence and the violent will take it by force. And so he did say to me to say to them that if, tell them that if they desire to get married, they will get married and they should not let anyone deter them from that desire by telling them, oh, but what's the point? And look at the times and things like that. Human hearts will be cleaving to one another just as Adam and Eve did until all time. I spoke of the fact that they will mock men who still like women and women who still like men in the future of America. Once the sodomites rule, rise to the apex of their power, and you can certainly see them uh, scrambling up there to their peak position right now, these things are being allowed to happen. But just because the prophecy is reaching apex, it does not negate a single promise that is in this Bible. And this is why many stumble. They are unable to hold on to time-honored biblical prophecies Biblical promises simply because the time for judgment prophecy to ascend the hill and plant the flag of God's ascendancy over the kingdoms of men have, has come. God is going up the hill and guess what? The Bible is going up the hill with him. Whatever it says that you can believe for shall be yours for it shall be well to the righteous and they will eat the fruit of their doings. And so the prophecy that is called the stock in the store, I will simply attach the link for it in the description box to keep this from running on into a further hour. I am Celestial and this is the Master's Voice. May God bless you. May God strengthen you in your most holy faith. May God give you the right words to say at the right time. May the Lord favor you in all that you are doing. May the Holy Spirit prepare the way for you and keep your feet from stumbling and the angels that have been given charge over you to guard you and keep you in all your ways so that you crush the heads of serpents and you tread on scorpions and put the lion and the young lion under your feet. May God's goodness continue with you always. Bless you and until I see you again, goodbye.